I'll go to the section now. Thank you, guys. Could I take Dom Smith first, please? Thanks very much. Uh, first of all, a question for Heger. Obviously, it's a squad of only 18 players, so qu quite a small one. Uh, just a question on the four travelling reserve players. Um, I mean, how do they take the news? Um, obviously, it's, it's better than being left out entirely, but of course, ultimately, they're not in the squad. So, so how have they taken that? For us, they are in the squad. I know that 18 uh, are selected and, and four reserve, but for us, we travel with 22 players. We're excited. They are young players coming, uh, have a, a bright, bright future ahead of them. So I think uh, they all are just eager and, and proud to be a part and to get the experience of being in a major tournament for the Euros coming up uh, uh for them later and just one question for sue as well if i can um people in tokyo and, and on the olympic committee about covid and, and such plans as that because of course as we know coronavirus has hit the entire world but at different stages and and, and tokyo has been you know more more impacted recently than the uk so yes i mean uh, I, tokog uh, the, the tokyo organizing committee and, and the japanese government are doing a phenomenal amount to get this games on uh, and the international olympic committee working with the international federations have been sending us very regular briefings on a you know on a very regular basis and uh, there are now very clear protocols that we're all working to in terms of the way we take our tests when we take them what that means uh, and of course, all our players and support team will be vaccinated before departure to Tokyo. So I think everyone has been scrupulous about this. It, everybody understands the danger and no one wants our athletes to be put in, in danger. So um, I, I think all the measures have been taken and I'm very confident that the protocols that they've put in place hopefully will keep us all safe. Okay, thank you very much, both of you. Best of luck when you're out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dom. Could we go now to Katie Sands for Wales Online, please? Hey all, hope you're well. Um, Hega, this is a question for you. Can you just tell me a little bit about why, why you selected Sophie Ingle? What, um, what, what qualities has she got that you're looking forward to see? Well, um, first of all, she's a great player. She's a captain, um, a captaincy, uh, leadership. She can play multiple position. Uh, and uh, playing more and more for Chelsea uh, during the season, playing the Champions League, have a huge experience. So, so a great player and a great addition to our team. And can I ask then, how, how close did other Welsh players come to being selected? Can you tell me who they were? What held them back? I asked that with, with Jess Fishlock in mind in particular. And what, what do you think Wales can do generally to increase increase their, you know, their, their player representatives in future? Um, I don't know if I can uh, uh, answer the last question, but in terms of the players, We've been through the list of uh, all the players in all the home nations, went through the list, see how uh, diverse they can, like different positions they can play. And it, it ends up with the squad that we had now. So I felt everyone was in the discussion. And then we kind of had to, had to uh, like, get it when we get closer to narrow down the selection of course but it's been the hardest uh, decision ever to choose uh, from that many uh, great players and uh, last question last question for me i was going to ask um, both of you this if that's okay so does you know obviously for some people the the, the very concept of, of a team gb football team is um is political um does politics come into it at all or is it just a case of simply picking the best players and if they all happen to be from one one country then then that is the case that was uh, that was the question that i asked uh and there was no political in in the uh, selection so that, that free to pick whoever i think was uh, the best and there's been 
like like I said uh, earlier, there's been a process over a long time now uh, selecting the players. Great, thank you. Thank you, Katie. Could I go to Phil Medlicott for PA next? Uh, just uh, two quick ones, I think, probably the first one for Heger and the second one for Sue. Um, first one is, um, do we have a decision on the captain of the squad? Uh, that's for Heger. And then secondly, I was just going to ask for an update in terms of the warm-up game um, that was kind of talked about a little while ago. Do we know any more about when it might be, uh, who it might be against, venue, etc.? For a captaincy, we haven't. Uh, we just now selected the team, so now we go in uh, for the June camp and discuss and and talk about the squad and who do we think uh, can be the captaincy, the the leadership group, and so we just now kind of June seventeen we will meet all the players, some of them for the first time, so uh, that will be an ongoing discussion for the. Uh, staff uh, yeah and from my point of view uh, we we are still working on it uh, it's not easy I think if you ask any of the nations that are trying to get a warm-up game it's, it's very challenging uh, because if you're not going to the Olympics then clearly most players are in down season uh, if you are going to the Olympics travel is really challenging and certainly our own um, restrictions on red and amber countries make it very difficult because it's a friendly. Um, it would be easier if it were part of the schedule in a, a fixed schedule, but it isn't. It's a friendly. I do think we'll be in a position to announce something very shortly. Uh, and we're aiming to, to put the game. Obviously, it'll be in the Euro well, during the Euros, but it'll be on a, a, a night when there are no matches. Uh, and it will be in the middle of the preparation that Heger is doing for us to have a look at the players and test them against real opposition. So we are nearly there. I, I wouldn't, I don't give you any more or, the, or our commercial marketing team will kill me. <laughs> can, can, we, can we even say if it's in the UK? Do we know that? Yeah, yes, it is, in the, it is in the UK. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And as soon as we can tell you, we will. I promise. <laughs> more news to follow, Phil, I promise. Yeah. Um, can I go to Glenn Moore next, please, for the eye? Um, uh, hi, Hager. Uh, a couple of questions when on the selection. These things are always about who's not on the team. Uh, Alex Greenwood must be very close to being selected, given her versatility and the fact she's had a full season, unlike Demi Stokes. And also Jordan obviously is a bit of a surprise being left out with her energy. Yeah, and like I said, it, this has been uh, a hard uh, decision and uh, a long process. Uh, so uh, of course they were disappointed uh respectful but disappointed and and like when you pick 18 players uh that was the the choice that we did and i feel like the strength and the depth that we have uh, are good for what uh, we are going into but and also, obviously, I mean, players do get injured and players could actually have COVID tests or test positive even quite late just before you go to Tokyo. I understand that you are allowed until 24 hours before the first match to call up players outside of the 22 who are travelling. Is there, is there any possibility that that might happen or would you only usually for alternate players? Because, I mean, have players been told don't go on holiday or keep yourself fit just in case they might be required? There's, there are still like uh, 50 days to go yeah and that that was the message also like up until july 7th uh, we can pick players uh, from the long list that has been on the long list so that was a message for all the players uh, not selected okay i'll pass on there's lots of good questions thank you thank you glenn can i go to tom gary please at the telegraph uh, thanks, Wendy. Good afternoon, Heger. Uh, could you tell us sort of what it was specifically when it came down to the decision to not pick Alex Greenwood, for example, and pick uh, Demi Stokes instead in the left-back role? What, what was the thinking there, uh, and particularly with Alex being able to play centre-back as well, was there anything that really made the deciding factor for you? Like we, we were looking at Demi quite uh, closely, following her and the experience that she had. 
and and she has played in the three position uh, in a long long time so that that was the position that we felt uh, defensively we we had some issues so it's yeah so for picking demi she's do her she's progressing now and i think uh, uh, for the Olympics, she will be more than ready for us to do a, a good job. Of course, and this time last year, uh, the, the players voted as their player of the season as Beth England. I appreciate the Olympics were moved by 12 months through nobody's fault, but uh, how unfortunate was Beth England not to be involved in, in, in these games? Yeah, like the criteria that we had for the selection, uh, all playing time was one major because of the the playing games every third day in the Olympics. So it will be hard, like the physical and and the, the game rhythm will be hard. So that was one major um, criteria for us to look at. And then uh, the selection came out from there. Okay, and just and if I could just ask one very, very last quick question. We're all obviously really sad that Chloe Kelly is injured. Would Chloe Kelly have been part of your squad of 18 if she had not suffered that ACL injury only very recently? Uh, like, that was uh, sad for Kelly, uh, Chloe, that uh, she was injured. Let me just say that. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks Thank for your time. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Nice try. Um, Molly Hudson, please, for the Times. Hey, again. Hi. Um, I just want to ask you a little bit about the reserve list. We've mentioned that Alex Greenwood and Jordan Nobbs um, didn't make the, the A team. Is there a conscious decision to really focus on younger players with the reserve list rather than maybe putting Greenwood or Nobbs on there? Yeah, that, that was the rationale behind the four players, four young players coming up uh, and get the experience from a major tournament they're going in, hopefully, into Euros. I'm not saying that they go to the Euros, but they will have the experience of being in, a, in the Olympics and a major tournament and, and the rhythm and, and game days and everything there. Uh, so... And if someone get injured, I feel like they perform well enough during the during the season, but also in the camp that they can go easily go into to the squad. We spoke to a couple of players this morning. They were talking about the, the speech that you gave maybe yesterday or a couple of days ago about winning gold yourself. I just wondered if, if you could tell us a little bit about that and, and what you hope to get across to the players. Yeah, I, I, I started by saying that I went to down to the basement to get my Olympic medal and to show them, <laughs> to inspire them. Uh, that was just uh, the Sydney Olympics for me is the biggest moment. Uh, not because we were performing uh, excellent during the whole tournament. We were uh, ups and down in our performance but when it mattered the most in the final um, we played our best game so that was kind of the message i wanted them to hear because we have short time in our preparation it will probably not be played great football from day one but if we work hard and believe in what we do i think we can achieve uh, what we all dream of Brilliant. Thanks, Hager. Thank you. Thank you very much, Molly. Could we go to Susie Rack, please? Hi, Susie. Susie? Hey, apologies if my signal is a bit bad. Um, can you hear me okay? Got you now, got I think. Yeah. Yeah, enough. Sorry, signal's a bit terrible in the front room. Um, Hager, um, congratulations on, on narrowing down a very, very difficult uh, number of players. Um, as Molly just mentioned, obviously you're an Olympic champion yourself. How important was it for you to have players with experience of that tournament within your squad? 
I feel like being in the Olympics is special. Uh, having players with experience uh, that could be uh, almost coaches for the players on the field, in the training, in the meetings, like everything that's going around. Uh, I think that was important. But also, like when you look at the history, uh, the experienced player um, uh, is uh, the player that I, that I show the young ones, the unexperienced player, how this will work. And I feel like the mix that we have now, like the eagerness of the young players coming in that want to do everything. And then the experienced player that tell this is not a good thing to do or kind of help to advise them to make the best decision. So I, I'm comfortable that the experienced player speaking to them, they know what to do and, and be help for the younger. You've got experience of, uh, of the Olympics, both from a player point of view and as a coach. How hard is it to be working with a, a team that is a bit more unconventional in that you're going to be together for such a short period of time when obviously as a player, you know, you're, you're playing very regularly with your with your national team when you're with the US, they're playing very regularly with 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 each other. Um, how much harder is the task because it's Team GB and it is this new group that is coming together now so close to the tournament? Of course, it's a, a challenge for us, but many like most of the players, all the players are playing in the league, so they play each other uh, regularly or play on the team together. So they kind of know each other, but they haven't played as a team together. And that's the challenge that we have. And that's the challenge that we are facing. And I think all of us are, are just uh, want this to get going because we are so eager to get this team uh, in two months to be the best team in the world. And uh, that will be a challenge we are uh, signed up for. And one more quickly, I think a few of us were quite surprised to see Karen Bardsley's name back on a, a, a list for an international um, tournament. Um, she played 45 minutes, uh, the first 45 minutes she's played in a couple of years uh, recently. And I think she'd, she'd say herself she didn't have the best 45 minutes she's ever had. Um, what was the thinking of bringing her back into the fold? Why was it important to have her part of the squad? She now... She moved to the US. She's playing for a club team there. She get the, the like I said uh, earlier, the playing time that is needed. And she has the experience. So the 45 minutes against Canada wasn't representative. So, uh, and she like in the meeting with the group, she was great. So that's, uh, that's why uh, she was picked for this Olympic. Awesome. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Can I go to Martin Lipton, please? Hi, Martin. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Um, can I take you back, actually, uh, Hegger? Um, most people I ask about their first Olympic memories, it's in the last 10 years. I suspect yours might be slightly um, <laughs> further uh, in, in the past. But can you tell me what inspiration you had? growing up in terms of Olympians and, and the Olympics, was there one event, one moment that made you think, gosh, I really want to be part of this? Uh, like when the first uh, in 1996 in the US, uh, that was the first uh, time we, uh, we played. And that, that was in the US. Um, but, but I've been watching the Olympics uh, growing up like seeing all the sport. We're following Norway athletes doing well, just wanted to be a part of that. And when it happened, like we won a bronze medal in 96. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the start of this Olympic is greater and bigger than anyone, anything else, because of you are together with the, all the other athletes, all the other sport. So the unity in the, in the world of sport is the best feeling. I, I think I'm right. Greta Weitz was Norwegian. Is that is that right? As a as an yeah. athlete. 
Was she yeah. one of those who you remembered running as, as a, you know, a, a female sporting role model for you growing up as well? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, could we go to the last couple of uh, questions, please? Dan Pentland, thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, Hege. Hope Hi. you're well. I don't think anybody's asked this question yet, but um, the Northern Irish players, obviously, there isn't any in the squad um, that did very well to qualify for the European Championships. Um, were any of those players very close to selection? I'm very uh, happy and glad that they qualified for the Euros. That will give them uh, more experience in the, in the tournament. Uh, and the player individually uh, wasn't close to the team. We have players now with a lot of experience in tournaments. Uh, so that was the, they now will grow as a nation and will be stronger. So for the next Olympics, there might be Northern Ireland players uh, coming into the squad, but for this time, there wasn't uh, uh, qualified, I feel. So it was simply just a case, possibly, that they hadn't had that major tournament experience, maybe for most of them, both club and international level. No, that's that's true. So, like, the, the intense Olympics with the Games regularly, uh, they wasn't close to the selection. Uh, yeah, no, that's brilliant. Thanks very much, Edgar. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And Florence Lloyd-Hughes, please. Hi, Florence. Hi, Hager. Um, I wanted to just follow up on a bit of what um, Susie and Tom asked about that, that game time this season. Obviously, it's been an intense season, but there are quite a few players in the squad who haven't necessarily played a lot of football this season, either due to injury or, or other reasons. So how much are you feeling like there's some players are going to maybe take a bit longer than others to get into the rhythm of, of playing a lot of intense football again? I think like for some, yes, but like if we take Steph Houghton, for instance, she hasn't played the last part of the season, but she played so many games leading up to the, her injury. So I'm comfortable uh, she will get back and perform. Uh, Demi is progressing uh, very good. She played a few games at the end of the season. Her progress will go further. Um, so uh, with 18 players, there will always be a risk of injury, but having the four reserve that we feel can uh, go in and uh, replace if injury. Uh, so the total of 22, I feel quite comfortable that can uh, go further in the tournament. And also just quickly on that, obviously during your short time in, in charge of England, you have been rotating a lot because you wanted to see everyone. But once you get into this role, get to Japan, are you going to try and stick with quite a consistent team? I don't think we can because the intensity uh, of the game and the heat and, uh, and playing games every third day, we will, we will have all the players, uh, need all the players ready for all the games. Thanks, Hager. Thank you. Could we have Charlotte Harper, please? Um, and Martin, is that an old hand? Martin's muted us. That's Charlotte a very Harper, personal please. question, but yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Uh, Charlotte Harper, please. <laughs> Hi, Hager. I'm a, I'm a new hand. Um, apologies if this question has been asked already. You mentioned the match um, game time as part of the criteria for selection. I was just wondering if you could tell us about the other factors uh, that were taken into consideration for player selection. Yeah, there, there were um, like uh, tournament experience, physical. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't have all of them in front of me now, but but uh, the physical, uh, the mental, and and like being a team team player, 
as well. So it was five or six uh, key factors that we went through uh, in in the selection for for this. And we had like the medical team was in, the mental team was in, the physical team was in. So this been a process uh, for uh, quite a bit. Uh, to get the, everything uh, what we wanted. Following up on Susie's question, you said with Karen that within the team meeting that she, you noticed her. Was that a, a key part in, in that experience, bringing the team to an Olympics? Uh, no, her moving to US to get the playing time, her experience from uh, tournaments before uh that was uh a few things that uh why she was selected thank you very much I guess